Time. Well, good morning, Vancouver. Look at that shot right there. This guy's all fired up. Thor's Hammers, it's uh, upon us. Yeah. Ball back Friday. Let's talk about George Clooney. Don't get too excited, okay? <laughs> Bit of a misfire this week, I'm afraid, and uh, it's a rare one. So George Clooney directs Suburbicon, and this is set in 1959. It stars Matt Damon. It's a tale of deceit, betrayal, and murder. Mm -hmm. These animals killed mom. <laughs> this is a safe place. It was. Nothing like this ever happened here. You develop a nose for Hanky Panky. Take care of the kid. Would you like a cup of coffee? Hi, pal. This town is falling apart. Oh, this makes it look so good, but it's not. <laughs> so George Clooney not starring in this, just directing this film. Yeah, and it's got a long storied history that goes back to 1986. According to producer Joel Silver, this was a uh, Coen Brothers script originally that they developed way back in the late 80s. And uh, in 2005, it resurfaced where Clooney was going to star and direct in it. But now they want to release it because it's a thinly veiled social commentary on what's going on in the States with the, uh, the tension with race relations and the different social classes and things like that and flash forward to 2017 you've got Matt Damon, Julianne Moore, Oscar Isaac starring with Clooney behind the camera. It doesn't work though. What are the bright spots of this film because the early reviews are underwhelming. Well the acting is excellent. Damon once again is formidable although his character never quite takes off. Julianne Moore very effective. Oscar Isaac sensational as always although he doesn't have much to work with because he's only in a few scenes. And Clooney's a competent director. I like where he puts the camera and it's got some meticulous production design because it's set in 1959. They really nailed the look of the film and you can see that in, in the aesthetic and um, the wardrobe the, the fashions were all captured really well and even things like the old flashmatic uh, remote controls they would use on the television screens that stuff is all there and it you know it looks awesome on paper it's just not well executed it feels like a hodgepodge of different elements that are all competing so at times it feels like three different movies he tries to do uh, social commentary uh, tries to tackle racism and then there's also this murder mystery plot and it's all a hodgepodge of elements that don't cohesively work so it meanders around and the editing is the most jarring thing about this film it just uh, feels very choppy and to me it seemed like there was so much left on the cutting room floor uh, this would have been maybe a good movie say 10 15 years ago when it was uh, in its early stages of development but I feel like this one should have stayed shelved I think in my nine years working with you this is the first time you've ever used the words hodgepodge to describe <laughs> a film dare I ask how many hours oh I love Clooney and uh, Damon and Julianne Moore but this does not work two out of five two out of five so binge watch Stranger Things 2 is what you're saying. I think so. Or go see Blade Runner again. Oh, you got options.